you know, Philadelphia Foundation is really a leader in this field, and we appreciate having you, Thank you know, in that in that role. Uh, what, what has been working for you in working with advisors? What's really been great uh, with the advisor community are the um, and well received are the educational seminars that we do. We do a spring seminar and a fall seminar. Uh, offer continuing education credit from legal education credits to CFP credits. Um, life insurance um, agents can come and get credit as well. Um, we we cover different topics each um, each time. We have 50 to 100 advisors who come. We started something last year that's really taken off. It's called First Fridays at the Foundation. Every first Friday, we invite advisors to come to the Foundation at uh, 1234 Market Street downtown for a hot cup of coffee and a hot topic. And we bring in local um, advisors to talk about some topic dealing with philanthropy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, short and sweet. You're in and out in an hour. Um, and people really get to network with each other mm -hmm. um, and, um, and get valuable information. We also have a professional advisors network. Okay. Um, and we'll be expanding that this fall. Um, and so if, if advisors are not already on our mailing list, they should contact us to get um, on the mailing list to be included in the network. Uh, network, network members receive additional information, uh, material um, visibility, if mm -hmm. that's what they're interested right. in. Right. We often call on advisors, too, to, to serve as speakers or um, article writers for our newsletters. Mm -hmm. And we ourselves um, also produce uh, electronic newsletters that are really very well received because they give you not only information about what's going on the, in the world of philanthropy um, from tax changes or um, new pending legislation, but we also give you information that you can literally print and share with your client. Okay. Real, real hands-on okay. tools. Yeah, you know, I, I think you're you're working with some very good advisors locally. Yes, right? absolutely. And would it be fair to say every community foundation is doing the same? You're kind of filtering the advisor community. You're trying to find the best of the best to be able to really get it and then give them some visibility? Yes. Would that, is that really part of what's Absolutely. happening here? So if people are listening and they're not near your foundation, that probably there's a community foundation local Absolutely. Then that's providing that filtering service for donors. Absolutely. And if they're not in the filter, they're either in or outside the tent. In a certain exactly. Sense. So they really should reach out and get exactly. to know the community foundation. And I've always told people the best way to do it is to bring a donor with you when yeah. you make that call. Yeah. Or to build a relationship. Yeah. You know, bring your donors to the foundation and have them um, get to know you. And that's a good way for you to get to know the advisor right. as well. Yeah, we're seeing a growing number, as I know you have too, a growing number of advisors who are uh, recognizing that, you know, their clients are giving money away. And that's a very personal and passionate thing that's very fulfilling for the client. And if the advisor can play a role mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. personal and and fulfilling, you know, right. uh, act, act, right. um, that can really deepen the, the relationship that the advisor has with the client. So our role mm -hmm. is really to help that happen, to actually facilitate that happening. And if the advisor isn't comfortable bringing it up or talking about it or only comfortable taking it so far, mm -hmm. they can bring their mm -hmm. client to us and we'll have that conversation. No strings attached. We mm -hmm. are in this business to advance philanthropy. Right. And if we can help your a client uh, right. give more uh, uh, do more um, and give back more. That's our role. That's our That's real excellent. role. You're, you're really a part of the planning team and you bring something unique to it, which is the passion for philanthropy and, exactly. it, and a local expertise in it and your peers around the country do the right. same. So it's, I think it's really critical for our field that we begin to partner systematically. Exactly. You're doing it already, but we can do it more systematically. Uh, what kind of new initiatives are you trying that you think would work or are working? Um, well, this fall we are going to be launching the Center for Family Philanthropy. And that will include a bundle of different, um, very exciting things. Um, for example, we plan on doing a philanthropy class for advisors. Uh, real hands-on, no kidding, come in and really get to know how to do this work um, so that you can do it yourself and you feel comfortable and confident um, helping you understand how to have these conversations, how to help your clients align their values with their goals, their mm -hmm. uh, philanthropic goals, how to have family meetings. Um, another part of the Center for Family Philanthropy will be um, family funds. We're actually creating a new type of fund. I named the, the other varieties earlier, but this is a family fund where you can have one fund and five accounts. 
Hmm. So you can set up uh, sub accounts okay. for your children right. or siblings. Right. Um, and that way you can actually um, include the family and really engage children young and old yeah. um, in the mm -hmm. family's philanthropy and actually really put some meat to whatever it is that you're trying to do as a family in terms of your family legacy. Heather, if somebody wanted to get a client involved with you, what is the minimum amount of money you'd want to have them bring to the table? Well, the Philadelphia Foundation um, has a belief that uh, anyone can be a philanthropist. So we actually have set our minimums very low so that it's accessible to everyone. So anyone can set up a fund at the foundation with $3,000. Your fund won't start making grants until it reaches $10,000. Okay. The fees that we charge are, uh, as a nonprofit are 1% of the asset value in the fund. So we try and keep mm. our, our minimums very low so that um, you don't have to be wealthy to do this. You really right. don't. Um, people in this country are very generous, and we mm -hmm. want to be a place where they can feel like they're actually making an impact right. and making a difference. Would it be fair to say in a way this could be almost like training wheels for doing a private foundation or something that's more expensive and fancier? This is a way to find out if you really like doing it? Ab absolutely. We work with a lot of advisors who have private foundation clients, and we work with a lot of private foundations. Um, you know, private foundations have a mandatory 5% distribution rule that they have to give away 5% of their assets. Many of these small family foundations can't get the family together to make those decisions. Right. They can actually distribute the 5% to a donor advised fund at a community foundation, okay. meet the payout requirement, and okay. then the trustees can take their time making mm. the decisions as to what charities will eventually get that money. We also have lots of donors who have private foundations and they use a donor advised fund to enhance what they're already doing. Private foundations are not private, they're very public. People know who you are and what you're giving to. Right. A donor advised fund can actually be anonymous. And so we have a lot of donors who hmm. do different kinds of grant making out of their donor advised fund, or they use a donor advised fund to, um, as you said, training wheels, or right. uh, trying to um, use it to figure out how they're going to actually run their private foundation eventually. Right. So the, the um, And they get all of the help from the community foundation where they're to help them with grant guidelines, et cetera.